Okay, this means we finished early, so we can take uh, some more questions that we couldn't take before. Um, so we have 10 minutes for um, postponed questions, if people can still remember their original questions. Yeah, uh, and we have a... Uh, wh whose mouse was that, by the way? Can we uh, return? Okay, yeah. Okay, so any questions that were still postponed? Okay, yeah. I had a question regarding the GPRS and the, the channels and how many... Uh, basically, if, uh, if a user is connected via GPRS, does it use up that traffic channel? And how, how long does it use it up? And how many users can use that, that traffic channel? Okay, sorry, could you repeat it? Uh, it's okay, I, I'll answer. Sorry. Um, so... Um, the allocation is dynamic on GPRS. It's not uh, unlike circuit switched, where basically the the um, each call takes up one time slot, whether it's a, a full rate or a half rate time slot. Um, in GPRS, basically, that uh, e even inside a single time slot, the allocation is dynamic. So basically, if there is data for ten phones, then it will take some uh, some uh, messages are sent for one phone some messages are sent for another phone so it's completely dynamic um, uh, like you would have in any other uh, packet oriented shared media uh, let's say uh, Wi-Fi or something like that okay well there you have collisions so it doesn't really match uh, that way but okay anyway it's dynamically allocated so there is no theoretic limit on how many uh, phones can use that channel at the same time of course at some point it will get infinitely slow mm -hmm. So um, that's a practical limit, but theoretically you can have you know as many phones as you want, um, and uh, they can exchange data over, uh, concurrently even over a single time slot or over a collection of time slots. There is one limitation though in the number of temporary flow identifiers because each phone that currently actively transmits an IP packet has uh, what's called this TBF, the temporary block flow. And I think it's 16 is the maximum, but I'm not, or it's 32. Does anyone know exactly? I don't know exactly how many, but mm -hmm. can be like 16 temporary, 64 even. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, so you can have 64 concurrently on a protocol level uh, in parallel, but then as soon as one temporary block flow has ended, let's say the, the, the website uh, has been downloaded, like the current page you're opening has been downloaded completely, and the user is just reading, then this temporary block flow is closed and the identifier is freed again so another uh, subscriber can use it. So it's very um, dynamic. I was going to ask, but following on this, so this is on a protocol level, but specifically on an implementation level, how does, uh, how does the Osmoverse handle uh, fair resource allocation as far as as far as GPRS and Edge? I don't think we're fair. I don't even think we do. I mean, I don't even think we do much effort. I'm not sure whether Holger has something to say about that. Um, do you have something to say about it? <laughs> Very little. Okay. I mean, the point with GPRS is, right? Um, we had very, very, very limited resources to implement something as complex as GPRS, so we are happy that we have something that works at all, right? And, and fair allocation and other esoteric topics, which of course in reality matter, but that's sort of where, you know, who, who uh, has an interest in, in donating resources to that? I mean, we we're always very happy to... You have, okay. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, 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 I can actually ask more specifically in a way that doesn't make it seem like it deserves an apology, which it doesn't. We are all happy to have what we have. Have, um, or we should put our money where our mouth is. Um, but I, I, I'll, I'll be more specific. Um, say, for example, you create a cell that has, uh, you know, one whatever the required time slot is on TIA, like the first TS zero, and then one through seven are all PDCH. Different, uh, you know, MS hardware can support different like channels and block allocations, or whatever else. Um, do you max it out every? I, I suppose I should answer this question by looking into the code, but it's more interesting in the form of a discussion. Yeah, uh, look at the code now. It's okay. it is complicated in, in many ways. So there are different MS classes that have different requirements. How quickly they can switch from receive to transmit, mm -hmm. and you have different amount of channel combinations available, like seven slots in a row, some with holes. And what we try to do is. Uh, spread allocations equally across the PDCH. 
So even if you have a, a mobile station that is uh, assigned to multiple time slots, there's always one control time slot where the TFI is actually being used. And we try to allocate MS across different time slots equally. But depending on the channel combinations you have, it already limits of how many time slots you can allocate. So if you're the first time slot already has some users, you try to use the second one, but then depending on the MS class, you can only allocate two time slots in ten, instead of three. So this is where fairness is already failing. But the only other part is that what Daniel mentioned earlier is that you have like an allocation algorithm and he mentioned dynamic and the dynamic part is that if the cell is really, really crowded, we go from like multi-slot allocations to single slot allocations. On the fly. On the fly depending on, on the loads here. Good. Thank you. Oh, I have to continue. I'm, do, do we have more questions? <laughs> Three, more uh, Three more minutes. Three more questions. Keys? Did I? No? Okay. Um, I had a question about the femtocell, and um, I believe that the, that one that you have sourced and that you were using, it, there isn't anything particularly special about it, right? It's just in a standard mode and you can access it. But um, is there, um, are there any considerations in like which models? There was, there was something about one that was opened, right? That was, what was, what was good? The consider consideration is for you what phantom cell you can actually get. Okay. So <laughs> that's really, or how much you're willing to pay because the market is very limited. They tried to have like a huge market for femto cells, which means the companies having a business model femto cells wanted to sell them in 100,000 units. So mostly the operator customers tried to buy them and there's not really an open market for 3G femto cells. Which, which was the one that, that some firmware got accidentally? Uh, oh, many. I, I can refer to Kevin if he wants to give her a small overview. <laughs> so the very first femtocell which got somehow hacked was by THC. It's the Vodafone UK femtocell. Um, but there, there's not a lot of documentation except from, from this group. The second one is the one I worked on. It was the SFR femtocell which was ubiquitous, then Broadcom, then Picochip or other way around. Uh, they also have a 3G, uh, a newer model now, which isn't broken. The older model is still broken. Then there is the one from Huawei. You can access. Oh, you can access. Yeah, bro broken. Broken means the secu We found a security weakness, so so we can access it. Um, there is one from Huawei, but w which we played quite a, some some time with, but. Each model we bought had complete different configurations. Sometimes UART was there, sometimes JPEG was there, sometimes the, the firmware was completely locked, sometimes the symbols were stripped, so we stopped with it. Um, um, Harold also spoke about another one where we didn't get any provision. This is the exact same model than the one from the newer one from SFR, which has no where no weakness has been found in a slow time. And for 3G, I think that's that's the big overview. Except now the the one which is used now by by Osmocom and the photo accelerate 3G. This is the one which is the easiest to use because um, you can still find it. You don't have to get uh, fro to an operator because previously you had to get to Vodafone UK, SFR France. So you need a subscription, which is quite a hassle. And um, yeah, there are the tools and it is open. So I think the best bet would be try to find whatever they are using. One more minute. Another question? Ah, no. Sorry. There's nothing. Ah. Uh, one uh, one of the issue of using the regulated frequency is of course the the legal aspect of it. Uh, in uh, moving from um, uh, BTS to femtocell, uh, do we soften that issue or not? Uh, do we suffer from that issue? So soften, soften, reduce it. Ah, um, no, uh, not really, because. Um, I mean, with GSM, depending on the jurisdiction you're in, depending on the country, it's still possible to get test licenses. Uh, um, and 
more or less uh, much more easily because it's only 270 kilohertz and it's more likely that somebody has 270 hertz uh, 270 kilohertz of free spectrum somewhere that you can use as opposed to 3g where you need five megahertz of spectrum um, which is a very large chunk which is uh, much less likely that anyone has a spare five megahertz somewhere that you can use uh, um, at a given location so that doesn't really improve the situation i mean maybe on obscure bands um, but then you would need hardware that supports obscure bands, which makes your choice of femtocells even much less limited, unless you go for uh, like one of those software-defined small cells, uh, which have no band filters and so on, and they're completely reconfigurable. But then, what phones do you find for the obscure bands? So it doesn't really improve uh, the situation. <laughs>